Well, welcome back to the Emergency Management Division. As everyone knows, of course, Mother Nature is with us again, and we have a winter storm mainly down on the coast, and it's moving from the, from the south up to the north, and we expect it to be out of the Myrtle Beach area and on up into North Carolina by around midnight tonight. Midnight tonight. But in the meantime, they're very dangerous conditions out there, more, more so as you get into the low country. They ease up as you get into the Midlands from Aiken uh, through Columbia and on up uh, through above Florence and Marion. But uh, down below that, it's, it's very dangerous. And in some places, there are five or six inches of snow. There's ice on, uh, ice is all over the place. We expect it to be uh, below freezing uh, in, in the evenings, at, at night. Uh, from now till probably Monday, or at least through the, through the weekend till Monday. And of course that could change. There are a number of things we want to remind everybody, and we, we do this every time because we all tend to forget. And so what we're seeing now is snow and freezing rain in some parts of the state, particularly, as I said, along the coast. And it is cold, 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 and it's going to stay cold. So that means stay indoors and, and stay in communication, watch the news, uh, go, to, go to the internet. We've got a, um, a website at scemd.org. That again is scemd.org, and that has the latest weather conditions statewide, and that's the Emergency Management Division's website. But stay indoors. If you have to go outside and dress up, because it's going to be cold, as I say, from now till probably sometime in Monday. In fact, the high temperatures on Thursday are probably going to be uh, probably in the upstate about 37 in the Midlands, uh, from Aiken all the way across about 25 and down in the Low Country. It'll be just maybe above freezing and just above it. And that's that's the high temperature that we expect of right now. Limit your time outdoors. Don't take any chances. A lot of times people get out as cold as they think and you can't get back in fast enough and that presents problems. Driving, as you're driving, remember, if there's ice on the road and rain and snow will freeze overnight and there'll be ice on the roads, you will, can slip and slide and go off the road or go across the uh, median. So don't drive if you don't have to. If absolutely necessary, then, then drive, but otherwise don't. And uh, don't put the emergency personnel at, at risk, because if, if you go out and something happens, that means someone's going to have to come get you, and that puts everybody at risk, and also takes them away from other tasks that they need, need to be doing. Listen to your local radio and TV station. They have great maps. They can show you things that are hard to explain these days, so uh, stay alert and keep asking questions. And this is very important. Be, be alert about carbon monoxide uh, poisoning, you can get that by having your portable generator working uh, indoors. You can buy burning charcoal indoors, a lot of things like that, that people resort to when it gets real cold. Don't do that, even for just a few minutes, because you can kill yourself and everybody in the place with you. Call somebody, go, go to a neighbor, do something, but, but try to be prepared for that and don't let that happen. Also, be sure to check on your, your senior citizens, your elderly neighbors, or anyone you think might be at risk if their children are home alone because their parents or adults are away, check on them. Look out for the animals. They'll freeze to death. If they're outside tonight, tomorrow night, they'll freeze to death. If they can't get in the heat, they will freeze to death and they'll be gone. And that same thing will happen to people that are outside as well. So we have to be careful about that. Uh, always uh, stay in communication. You'll be glad to know, I believe, that the the Emergency Management Division in all of its uh, aspects all across the, the state, the, the state officers, the county officers, the city, all of them are in constant and instant full communication as we have been with hurricanes and floods and other things like this. So we, we couldn't be more alert or more in communication. If you stay tuned, we'll provide you with the best and latest information possible. Mr. Spencer, yes, sir. Director of the Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to start off with uh, basically our mission, and that's to coordinate the state response to during any emergency. Uh, I think most of you already know that, but bears uh, repeating, I think, sometimes. But what that really means is support to local authorities when they run out of resources and they need assistance 
Uh, that's where we step in with state agencies uh, and, and making sure that they can fulfill their missions at the local level. Um, I would also mention that uh, right now we've only had one request for assistance at the county level, and that was for a member of our staff from EMD to go down and augment uh, their staff in the EOC. We're operational here with uh, selected emergency support functions and certainly some of our staff here, uh, the DOT, DPS, uh, DSS, ORS, uh, DNR, a uh, number of uh, state agencies are here. And we want to be here in the event that something happens and we need to react quickly. And that's the only way we can do it is being here in the CEOC to do that. So fortunately so far we have not had a lot of issues. Uh, and I hope we keep it that way, but we do again want to be in a position to, to assist if we need to. And also, just to kind of mention again, what the reiterate what the governor talked about was our website at scemd.org. We have our winter weather guide on there uh, that you can download or look uh, look at uh, at the website, and it's full of information uh, what you need to do to prepare for winter weather, during winter weather, and then after winter weather. So we're already in this operation right now, but the winter's not over. So this is a great uh, resource to take a look at and uh, and make yourself prepared. Thanks. Thanks, sir. So Greg Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Department of Public Safety has 165 officers assigned to this event. Uh, we're assisted by the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, we have 18 DNR officers assigned to the event as well. For, the, for a total of 183 law enforcement officers responding uh, to this event. Our primary areas of focus, uh, the coastal region, uh, the, uh, the, the low country, uh, the Orangeburg area up to uh, the Richland uh, area. We are very uh, visible, highly visible along our uh, corridors. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, collisions uh, and a lot of uh, disabled vehicles that we are assisting uh, as well. Uh, we are also uh, pushing our message out via our uh, website, scdps.gov, as well as uh, pushing our message out via uh, social media. Uh, also, in terms of a safety message, I just would like to reiterate what the governor said earlier. Uh, if you're in the impacted areas, uh, please stay home unless you absolutely have to uh, go out. Uh, please stay off the, the roadways, especially in those impacted areas. Uh, conditions are very uh, uh, dangerous at this time. Uh, and if you are in your uh, vehicle, make sure that you have an emergency kit. And I would also uh, recommend having uh, uh, extra clothing and blankets uh, in your vehicle in the event that your vehicle becomes uh, disabled. Also, uh, doing these conditions, uh, uh, it requires uh, motoring, the motoring public to drive slower, uh, to uh, accelerate slower, and to brake uh, slower than you would normally do so. And again, be safe. Uh, if you have an emergency, uh, Always call 911, and uh, if it's anything other than an emergency, uh, you can always dial star HP, that's star 47. Thank you. Thank you. The weatherman, John Farrell, if you please. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the Governor pretty much highlighted the greatest concerns. We do want to point out that um, you know, we still have more snow to go here this evening. The threat for ice has pretty much ended, but we still see additional snow accumulations uh, this evening, across, especially across the eastern portions of the state. And then once the snow ends tonight, uh, we do have some concern that there will be breezy conditions along the coast and any snow and ice accumulation on tree limbs and on power lines, in addition to that wind, could result in additional power outages to be concerned about. And then uh, again, in the next, uh, the next few days, we have some concern that the snow is going to stay on the ground tomorrow morning with you know, sub-freezing temperatures tonight. And then even if some melting occurs during the day tomorrow, we could have refreezing occurring again tomorrow night and sending Friday and Friday night. So we just need to be aware of, uh, you know, the dangerous conditions that the snow will pose here over the next couple of days. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on what the previous uh, director have said, uh, Director Smith had said, we currently have a lot of uh, snow-covered roads along the coastal area, several bridges that are iced over, and uh, we're working very closely with the a lot of the city and county governments to try to get those uh, bridges reopened and the roads plowed. Uh, we've dedicated over 1,400 employees to this effort so far. We continue to move resources from the Midlands 
uh, in the upstate area down to the coast to try to help uh, combat the situation that we're dealing with with these snow covered roads. We've put out over 13,000 tons of salt already, which represents about 2,500 dump truck loads of salt on the roads, trying to help de-ice things and uh, enable us to get the roads dried off. But this is a situation we're going to be dealing with for the next several days. As you heard from the Weather Service, we're expecting temperatures to drop back down to freezing and stay below freezing overnight. So what is on the roads is, is likely, likely to refreeze. And uh, so we're going to be dealing with this for several, several days going forward. So we just urge a lot of caution, a lot of patience. Um, and we just, want, again, want to thank our local governments for helping us uh, get, uh, get the roads restored uh, as quickly as we can. Thank you, Governor. General McCall, National Guard. Thank you, Governor. The soldiers and airmen of the South Carolina National Guard are prepared to support uh, the winter storm response as needed. Uh, we sent out a warning order yesterday to our units to have them to make the necessary preparations of the equipment and uh, notifying the personnel that may be necessary in, in need of a response. Uh, we've also been in contact with our counterparts in the state of Georgia and North Carolina in case there's any uh, mutual aid requests that need to be uh, met between the states. So we believe we're prepared and ready to accept missions as they are needed. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd urge everybody to remember to exercise caution, exercise patience, and remember just a moment of inattention or a moment of risk can cause a whole lifetime of, of pain. So let's, let's all be very careful. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. In terms of absolute accumulation, uh, what kind of numbers are we talking about with the snow that's already fallen and the snow that's forecasted to fall? Yeah. So far, we've uh, received uh, widespread reports of two to four inches, um, especially across the low country with amounts as high as six inches so far. I think the highest we've had is the Somerville area in Dorchester County. And we still could see another couple of inches on top of that. So uh, the potential is there for many parts of uh, the coastal areas to see maybe four to six inches on average, as, as high as four to six inches. Again, some locally higher amounts are even possible on top of that. In terms of ice, that threat's pretty much over. Most reports we've received so far today have generally been between one-tenth and two-tenths of an inch with some minor higher accumulations than that in a few locations. Uh, Director Smith, have we seen any fatalities or, uh, you know, either from you know, car accidents or, or freezing due to low temperatures at this point? At this time, there are no uh, reported uh, storm-related fatalities. What kind of resources have you got brought in from the upstate of South Carolina? What kind of resources have you brought in from the upstate? Again, uh, we have uh, 165 assigned to the event. Uh, some of the resources are local, and some are brought from the various uh, troops or uh, the state transport police. But uh, again, uh, we'll ship them from various locations uh, to, uh, to augment the uh, local staffing. And we saw OPCON 4 up uh, behind you guys on the screen there. For everybody out watching right now, can someone just explain OPCON 4? Yes. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's the possibility of a disaster situation. It really raises our level of awareness and puts into motion being prepared if there is an actual event. So that's kind of what we're doing right now. We're here at OpCon 4. We've got um, limited staffing, select staffing in the event that we do have uh, a more widespread emergency than we've got right now. And just to clarify for folks out there, this is not a state of emergency right now? We do not have a state of emergency right now. For families who uh, may find themselves late in the night without power, are there any shelters or any type of arrangements for these families, or what should they do if they find themselves in that predicament tonight? Uh, there's a, a number of uh, shelters open across the state. There's actually nine right now. There's uh, shelters in Bamberg, Charleston, Dillon, Jasper, Williamsburg, and Beaufort. <coughs> And that information and specific locations are available on our website. So they're, they're not particularly uh, uh, used right now. I think we've got only a total of about 15 people that are being sheltered. But that could change overnight. How else would they get in touch with someone who uh, don't have a uh, computer, don't have a, so can't get to a website? Uh, well, hopefully they could access their local county emergency management office. They can call them. Uh, or they could also call here at SEMD as well, and we can get them referred. Further questions? 
Just a side question. Any comment on uh, Dominion and Scana that you'd want to give at this point? We're making progress. Any more questions? Thank you very much.